Hello and welcome to a discussion with the Bluffton Center for Entrepreneurs and our guest Fred Steiner. I'm uh, Paula Scott. Uh, and I'm your host, and uh, I just want to introduce you to the BCE, the Bluffton Center for Entrepreneurs, if this is your uh, first experience with us. So we are in Bluffton, but we serve the four counties surrounding us. So Allen, Hancock, Hardin, and Putnam counties are all served by the Bluffton Center for Entrepreneurs. And so you might be asking yourself, how is being a writer, uh, being entrepreneurial? Well, we're going to explain that this evening, because if you're interested in self-publishing, and that's why I assume you're here tonight, uh, you do have to start thinking about yourself as an entrepreneur. So good evening, Fred. Um, welcome, and thank you for joining us. When did you become an entrepreneur? Uh, 2009. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a person who does not take risks, and uh, doing that doing that was a real risk for me, just uh, going out on my own. But, yeah, I don't know why, but so. So if you, ha if you haven't met Fred before, he is, I think I would say, first a journalist, um, second Oh, gee, what? I don't know about the, or uh, the order. Second, an author. Third, an entrepreneur. Fourth, a photographer. Fifth, a historian. Um, how, would, how would you rank those? Oh, that's all right. Yeah, that'll work. Sure. <laughs> so tell us how you got started in self-publishing. Okay. Um, well, I had a lot of material in file folders, in my head, uh, on my computer, and I wanted to put them all in one place. And in that event, a book was the place to do it. So uh, that that's how I that's how I got started, and and I picked up uh, several. Uh, I'm going to call them tips for anyone to follow uh, that worked for me, and that's what we're going to talk about. So if, if you're ready, I'm, I'm ready to go. Okay, yeah. So let's say I have a manuscript. All right. What? Okay. So the first thing that you need to think is, uh, is, is what, is, what is your book idea? Uh, is it, for example, a, a story of your life or a family genealogy? Is it a how-to book and then giving instructions on how to do something? Is it a collection of short stories and a, or a novel? Is it a photo book? Is it a children's book? Is it a poetry or inspirational book? A cookbook, craft book, or a coloring book? They're all kind of books. And what you uh, need to decide is what is your book? And once you've figured that out, um, what's the purpose of your book? Um, is it a giveaway? Are you going to print them and it's a, maybe a self-promotion or just the ideas that you have and you want to give them to people? And you've probably received a book like that, the self-published giveaway. Uh, maybe it's a fundraiser for a nonprofit. Maybe you're just the person that's putting it together and the proceeds are, are to benefit a, an organization. That's another way to do it. Um, or maybe it's just a gift to friends and family. Um, I have a cousin in Switzerland, third cousin, who has created an enormous volume of uh, alt house family information. He printed them for this family, he gave me a copy. It's in German, but that's okay. Um, so he gave it away. Um, or uh, is your purpose to become an author. Maybe that's what you want to be. Um, or finally, uh, it's a chance to place all that material you have into one collection so it won't get lost. So those are, those are some purposes that I find people uh, to put books together. Um, once you've uh, got the idea, what you need to do is identify your audience. Uh, for example, if you were going to write a book 
on classic Chevrolet automobiles, your audience, in my opinion, would be Chevrolet car dealers, people who, uh, clubs, who are Chevrolet anti-clubs, and that, that sort of thing. Uh, maybe even uh, uh, car dealer showrooms. That's an example. If you are going to uh, create a book for children, maybe your audience is pediatric uh, doctors, doctor's offices, um, or school teachers, or school organizations. So um, figure out who your audience is because your audience is probably not just everybody. It's, it's, you, you really need to figure out who, who that is. And once you identified those groups, try to try to uh, make inroads to uh, contact them. So so that's a very very important aspect. Can, can I interrupt you for a yeah. second? I sure. I have really been preoccupied after hearing a news story recently about an author who worked on a book for sixteen years, and then his son had to finish it and published the book. How do you know when, okay, it's, it's time to make this yeah. book? It's very difficult for me. It has always been difficult. When do, I, when do I draw the line and stop? You just have to do it. That's, that's the, it's, it's, it's one of the steps. Um, and we'll, we'll get to that in a second here. The fun part is, is Meanwhile, while all this stuff is going on, is to, is coming up with a title, and I would urge everyone who's doing this to to create a title and a subtitle. The title can be a phrase, it can be some kind of a grabber or some some kind of a a, a very interesting quote, but that doesn't tell me what the book's about. The subtitle, in my recent case, Essays on a Small Ohio Town, collected by Fred Steiner, explains what the book is about. So the subtitle is very clear ex explanation of what, what's inside. The title is another matter altogether. It's something maybe you like yourself. And, and I would suggest that, you know, I don't have any experience writing book titles, but I have worked with companies on what they're going to name their company. I highly recommend finding out how many other books are there out there with that title. <laughs> yeah, right. So you do some research, but it's fun. I, I think that I've probably in, in one of my, uh, one of these books that I did, I came up with 30 different titles, just kind of narrowed it down and then, you know, Everybody works differently, but that, that's, that's something to consider. In addition to that, um, this uh, book that you work with really needs some contributors. You should find someone to write an introduction or a preface. Someone that knows the subject just like you or knows you. Because when I open the book, and I've, this is the first time I've seen your book, I want to know a little about you. And that introduction is going to help me. As opposed to just opening the book and boom, there it is. I, I, I need an introduction. Um, and uh, with that, I, I want to get someone who, who I want to impress people with. Uh, here's an example with Bluffton Anthology. Um, I went through just a list of, I went th through a list of famous people who have a Bluffton connection. I didn't find anybody, but I looked. <laughs> I was very close to getting someone who was a National Geographic photographer who has published many books. His father went to Bluffton High School, went to Bluffton College. He knew my parents. I never knew this guy but I made an overture to him. Never heard from him. But it would have been really neat if the back of this book would have had an endorsement by him. It's just a, 
a thing that uh, is worthwhile to, to try to do. So this is a really fresh experience for you. Would you show us your, your latest book and tell it, just okay. give us a Sure, sure. So here's, here's Bluffton Anthology. The title is Bluffton Anthology. It doesn't really, it says Bluffton. It doesn't say much more, but there's essays on a small Ohio town collected by Fred Steiner. So that's, that's what uh, is going on in that one. This uh, book, A Good Place to Miss, doesn't tell you a thing about this book. It's, it's a pun, really. But the subtitle, Bluffton Stories, 1900 to 1975. So that's, that's what I'm trying to achieve there. Now, the back cover is just as important as the front cover. And I will show you the back cover of this one. Uh, let's use the word endorsements. It's good to get some endorsements, meaning quotations from people of authority on your subject. And here I've gotten, uh, for this is uh, a good place to miss, I had three people. And these are people who, uh, to me, were important because they're from Bluffton. My book was about Bluffton, and I wanted people to think, well, if, those, if these guys like it, maybe it's OK. And um, here's how you do that. With either getting someone to do an introduction or a back cover copy or an endorsement, you send them a very nice note, email, and say, hi, maybe they know you, maybe they don't. I'm Fred Steiner. I'm putting a book together on Bluffton Anthology, and it's a collection of a lot of essays by a lot of people. I'm wondering if I sent you some of the material, if you wouldn't mind writing a 75 word comment about the book and your name will be on the back cover. And I need your comment by a certain date. This flatters anyone. Wouldn't you like to have your uh, name on the back of a book? Of course. So, find, uh, and, and that this takes a little work, but you find some people approach them some not everybody's going to come through but but a few will and and there you have hopefully a nice back cover that when you go to a bookstore if that's where you look at this book or wherever it is you look at the book there's the cover naturally you look at the back cover and you see who said what about it so that's and, and that's a, a very important part because if you don't have that, this still is a book that's, that's a blank book. I don't, I don't know what it's about. So I, I would say that at this point, you really made the leap to entrepreneur. Um, yes. You're not just thinking about, okay, why did I write this book? You know, what is it about? But how do I pitch it? How do... I get people interested in it, mm -hmm. and you're 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 trying to put on your readers' shoes, trying to step into your readers' shoes um, when you're doing these things. Sure. Um, so I have down here estimate number of copies to be sold, and I guess uh, your your explanation just now is that there are a lot of reasons to give away books, but say. Uh, so estimate number of copies to be distributed, to be sold. How hard is doing okay. that? All right. Um, it's, it's like throwing a dart on a dartboard, depending upon the type of book it is. But let's, let's uh, do this. First of all, let's see how many pages the book is going to have. Is it going to be, or, or, or how, much, how much material do you have? And how does that translate into page numbers? What you can, one thing you can do is pick up a book that you like, look at it. For example, this one. To me, it feels right. It has 186 pages. That's the kind of a working book that I feel comfortable with. But how many words? What does it take to put this together? You can, I would suggest, count words on maybe five or six pages. Figure out how many pages are in the book, and you do a little math, 
or do a chapter that way. That's right. Yeah. Um, I was really surprised when I went to my bookshelf, how many authors I know that are on my bookshelf. And um, I think if you pick up a book and take a look at it, you know, can you tell if it's self-published? Um, can, what can you put in here? Fred, are there things that are harder to do? I mean, there are books that are all words. There are books that have illustrations at the front of each chapter. There are, you know, do you have photographs? Mm -hmm. What, what makes a book more or less complicated? Um, okay. Let me finish <laughs> okay. the word count and then I'll get into that. <laughs> yes, yes. Because there's a beauty, there's an easy part to this. And that is if you have your document on a, on a word document, you can highlight it and hit word count and that'll tell you how many words you have. So you'll know if you don't have enough or if you have too many. So that's kind of a starting point. At least that's what I do. And usually I don't have enough. So I'm always adding things. But that's a very rough way to figure out how many pages you're gonna you're trying to shoot for. Okay, I was gonna say, I know how many words were in an essay to hand into my professor, but how okay. many words are is it a 250 words a page for um it depends on the on the depends on the font font. and the type size and the lit depends on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're you've got an idea, you don't have any copy how am i going to put how am i going to put a book together i want to one suggestion is this uh pretend that you're a blogger and once a week write a 500 word essay in 52 weeks you'll have 52 500 word essays so a year from now maybe you've got what the starting point is that's, that's one way to do it the other way, maybe you already have the material, but it's all over the place. You need to just get it put together. Um, let me let me skip to one particular type of book that that'll that could answer a lot of these questions. Let's say you want to do a <clears throat> a book, <clears throat> excuse me, about um, a manual on how to do something, how to make something, or how to uh, conduct a a series of programs, something like that. Maybe that book should be an eight and a half by 11 book that has a spiral binding that you can open up and it just sits flat on your desk. And there could be pages in it that you would want to have the person make photocopies of. In that case, you are going to know how many pages your book will have because each page is an eight and a half by 11 and you're actually producing that page by page. So you, you'll know how many pages you have. Uh, <clears throat> something that you've probably never thought of, and I found this out the hard way, the first page is page number one. When you open it up, this is page number two and page number three. Now you may be laughing, but here's the point even number pages will always be on the left side. Odd number pages will always be on the right side. Why do you need to know that? You need to know that because if you want to start a new chapter on the right side, you have to know where you're going to end. The other thing is, if you want this book, if it's the kind of book that it is very important that the two pages that open up together are actually the pages you want to have, you've got to make sure that you know which one's left and right. The very first book I did, uh, Town at the Fork of the Rileys Revisited, I didn't think of that. I had, I had it all laid out, visually pleasing, and it was one page off. Nobody knows that but me. But if you went back and looked at it, you'd say, you know, he's right. It's kind of quirky. It's just, there's something wrong with this book. It wasn't supposed to be that way. So that's, that's a small thing. It doesn't always happen, but it's something to consider. Okay. 
Yeah, so that okay, leads to the question of where do I need help? Okay. Will the publisher do this? Will the do I need a graphic designer? Do I need an editor? Where do I where should you look for help? All right. Depending upon your ability, that's what kind of help you may want to have. I feel that my strength is in writing. It's not in editing and it's not in proofreading. I can I can create the material, but I need I need someone other than me to read it and really rip it apart. And I found that person, and that person for me is Liz Gordon Hancock. She ripped my book apart, and she was right. She she uh, questioned things, um, and if I wouldn't have given it to her. There'd be a lot of mistakes. There are mistakes in the book. I know where they are, but it would have been a lot. I couldn't do this without somebody else. Someone else had to read it and really ask me, is that what you meant? Or this chapter doesn't make any sense. Or I like this chapter. That was one of the, that was the greatest single expense for me was hiring a proofreader editor. I paid her by the hour. You might pay someone by a chunk, but I, I decided that that was the best way for me to do. My book designer, the person who designed the cover, I approached and said, I'll do in this book. I'd like you to design the cover. I will pay you $200 to design the cover, but I'll also pay you for revision time, because I'm gonna, there's gonna, we're gonna go through several revisions. Your name's gonna be on the cover or on the on the book also. Uh, my cover designer of this book was Jill Steinmetz, who lives in Bluffton. Her her parents live in Bluffton. This cover went through about five different versions, including different colors, different fonts, a different design. My idea was that I wanted it to look like a stream because a creek runs through it is kind of kind of a play on words. And I also wanted it to show that it's Ohio and there's a dot that shows Bluffton. The first the first edition or first her first run through didn't have any of that. It's a nice cover, but it wasn't what I wanted. So you know, we just go back and forth, back and forth on that. Finally, there's a point where it's like, yes, this is it. And, and it involves color. I like these colors. It involves, if I'm in a bookstore, maybe you're not, book isn't gonna be in a bookstore, but if I'm in a bookstore, is this gonna jump out? Just an, an idea, a question. If you self-publish a book, depending upon who you go with, these publisher can design it for you. And that's perfectly fine. I wanted to design it myself. So, but it would be an expense that you would pay someone. You'd either gonna pay the book publisher or your own designer. I, I paid my own designer for a lot of reasons. I wanted a local name. I wanted to be able to control it. And I wanted to promote a young graphic artist. So, so that's kind of how that uh, came together. And, uh, and if you want to sell your book, okay. um, uh, I, I wanna make sure that, that we cover that. So All I right. am down okay. here, okay. international standard book number. Yes. Is that required to be able to sell a book? All right, if uh, depend, okay. There are many book publishers out there when you approach them, you need to find out if they will provide you with an ISBN. If they don't, your book will not be on Amazon and it will not be in any bookstore. So that is something you're paying for, but it's a very valuable thing that you're paying for. Right. And if you're not familiar with that, I'm yeah. sure you're familiar with the barcode. Sure. Uh, yeah. It's going to be on there as well as probably on one of those uh, introductory pages possible. So, so ask your, your potential publisher, do you provide that? 
the one that I work with does. He also provides a copyright for me. He also has a catalog that he puts in and he sees that my book is on Amazon. If I wanted an e-volume, he would do it for me. I didn't want one on this, but that would be another, another thing. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna name three different places. I'm not endorsing these, but I would suggest these would be places to look. First of all, um, Work Play Publishing. That's where I believe Ruth Naylor, have you, you've worked with them, I believe. Uh, uh, Joanne Nicewender has. Um, we've, uh, Carlin Carpenter has. Um, the, uh, the publisher is Andre Swartley, who lived in Bluffton for a time and now lives in Kansas. But uh, he's a very good guy to work with. And uh, so that's one place to go, work, play, publishing. The second one is in Lima. It's called Fairway Press. And it is a self-publisher. And um, I, uh, full disclosure, I worked for them for four and a half years. That's kind of where I got a lot of my book information. But they're close by. You can visit them. They can certainly walk you through um, what you need to know. The third one is one I'm not as familiar with, but, but I am. It's called Mastoff, M-A-S-T-H-O-F. Mastoff Publishing, it's in Eastern Ohio. And um, they published a book for Delbert Gratz many years ago. I almost went with them and then I, I, I switched, but, but they're a firm that I, I feel very comfortable with. Uh, so those three, for example, will give you the things you need that need to be on that book to uh, get it out there. That isn't to say that there are others. There are other places also. Those are the three I'm familiar with. And uh, I know you had mentioned to me that, you know, we're pretty much focusing on writers and manuscripts in this discussion. Yeah. If you are a photographer or a painter, you need a, you need to t make sure that a publisher has done that type of work before. Correct. My second book, which was uh, The Bluffton We Never Knew, was an entire photo book. I thought this was gonna be a cinch until I got my first sample back and it was published, it was a sample, but it was published in a non-photographic mode. And it looked like it was off a copy machine. I nearly had heart failure. We had, that meant the price went up because it was a, had to go to a better quality paper. And sadly, then I learned that I could have done it in four color and I didn't know it. So, I learned something with each new book. That was a really sorry lesson I learned. Price went up, my, my profit went down, it took longer to print, to, to get copies of it, and it was a sad story, and I'll never do another photo book. Trust me, but you're welcome to try. Um, uh, so uh, I'm sorry to say that our half hour is just yeah, about up. Any, any, um, any wrap up, words to the wise, uh, yes. words of encouragement? Yeah, just briefly, um, you need to create an order blank for your book. You need to think about a way to promote it. You want to have some book signing events. You also want to create a news release about it. Um, schedule groups where you can talk about your book because that's where you sell them. In COVID-19, that has been a very, very difficult thing for me because I haven't had any book signing events. And that's where I could sell 20 books at a, at a time. Just keep, that opportunity is not there. Uh, finally, you need to consider that there is Allen County sales tax on books sold in Allen County. And Allen County's sales tax is... 0.0895%. If someone from out of state buys your book, there is no sales tax. 
But if you sell it in Allen County, you have to you have to collect that. And so you become friends with the Allen County Treasury. I think I'll stop with that. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. In six months or a year, we could have um, part B of, of this discussion. If you have questions for, for me or for Fred, please e email the BCE, message me on Facebook, uh, contact the bluftonicon.com. Um, you can reach Fred um, at uh, info at bluftonicon.com. Um, I think it's a great, uh, exciting opportunity for people. My disclaimer always is, we, this is the tip of the iceberg. We're not really recommending that anyone uh, um, do anything based on what we've talked about for 30 minutes. You know, make sure you do your homework, consider your particular situation and what you can afford to do, um, what risks you're willing to take. Right. Um, um, so as, a, as a real quick closer, uh, you're wondering pricing. Um, it's a random shot. This book is $24.95 because I felt like it was worth it. Now, that doesn't mean that the public thinks it's worth it. I had 350 copies printed. I've sold 200 already. My break-even point on this particular book was about 170 books. So I'm now in the black, $700. I'm very happy, but I've still got 150 books over there in the corner and I want to get rid of them there. Yeah, I don't know. Because I'm trying to make a profit. If yeah. I wasn't, it wouldn't matter. There. And, and you do have to think about if you have 300 books, do you have a place to store them? <laughs> yeah, and, um, I, and I do and I don't want them. I, I want to get them out. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, we are recording this for YouTube, but we have roughly 10 people who have been patiently um, waiting for our Q&A session. I'm gonna wrap up our recording here and post this on YouTube. I wanna thank everyone who has joined us. Um, next month, we are gonna have a session that is spotlighting Putnam County. We're gonna have um, the Putnam County in Improvement Corporation as a guest. Um, uh, and a couple of brand new businesses in uh, Putnam County as well. So um, watch us on Facebook, uh, sign up for our email updates, and uh, please join us for another monthly uh, discussion uh, with the Bluffton Center for Entrepreneurs. Thank you so much. And Fred and guests, stay tuned. We're gonna have our Q&A session uh, right now. Thank you again. <laughs>